Hey, what's up you guys, it's all here, and today I kind of want to talk a bit about what exactly all of the different subfields of chemistry are. I know a lot of you will have surface level kind of descriptions floating about, but for even more of you, there is a lot of confusion around what exactly you do in each subfield of chemistry. So I kind of want to go through each subfield one by one and explain the basics of each and every subfield and maybe what they actually do as careers and not just the classes you take within them. Now, to start off, there is organic chemistry, and of course there are the organic chemistry classes that most people take sophomore year of their chemistry major, so a lot of you will be familiar with this. Now, organic chemistry does not necessarily mean it is chemistry related with kind of living systems and all. That is more biochemistry. Organic chemistry simply refers to chemistry focused on carbon-based compounds. Now, these compounds will also usually have stuff like nitrogen and oxygen within them, but the main like structure and skeleton of all these molecules is going to be carbon-based. Organic chemistry is really interesting and it doesn't use a lot of math if that's kind of the part of chemistry that you're iffy about, but it does use a lot of spatial reasoning and stuff when you have to go through uh, units like chirality. Organic chemistry it is really important in synthesizing pharmaceuticals, fragrances, preservatives, fertilizers, and a lot of other stuff you use in your daily life. One of the biggest growing fields in organic chemistry as well is polymers, which usually use a lot of organic chemistry bases to create these long polymeric chains. Organic chemistry is really cool and it has a lot of different uses and it's kind of the biggest foundation of chemistry. I always thought it was when you sort of got into real chemistry once everyone has taken their general chemistry classes. And it is a really cool subfield of chemistry and there is a whole wide breadth of stuff that you can do with it from pharmaceuticals to polymers. Now, the second subfield of chemistry I want to go over, and you know, arguably one of the most important because it kind of lets all the other subfields of chemistry do their thing, is analytical chemistry. Analytical chemistry is a part of chemistry that no matter what you do in chemistry, you'll probably have to deal with a bit of analytical stuff because analytical chemistry is the basis of how we actually know what's going on on a molecular scale. Analytical chemistry is all about using the various instrumentation available in labs to actually determine what the molecule or stuff that you have made is. And for this reason, analytical chemistry is extremely important. You can do as much as you want in an organic chemistry lab mixing your clear solvents together, but unless you have analytical chemistry, you're never going to know what you've actually made. There are a whole ton of different analytical methods and techniques that are really interesting, from mass spec to FTIR, and once you've taken an analytical chemistry class in your uh, chemistry major, you'll actually know what a lot of these do. And one of the more interesting parts, you learn about how each one of these instruments works. Analytical chemistry is super important, so I really recommend paying attention in that class, and it will be really important throughout your chemistry career. And I actually think analytical chemistry is super interesting. It's really cool to see how these machines work, but also you get the raw data from these uh, machines and instrumentation, and it's almost like a puzzle and you're the detective trying to solve how all of this information fits together to create some structure of a molecule. You can just be given simple graphs and numbers from these instrumentation, and from that, you can actually establish a three-dimensional structure of a molecule, and that's really cool. Analytical chemistry has amazing job, job prospects. Everyone, even not in chemistry fields, kind of know, wants to know what's in their product or their water or whatever it is they're making. And so analytical chemists are in super high demand because people want to know what they have. And so if you decide to go into an analytical chemistry position, that's great for career prospects. The next type of chemistry I want to cover is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry is kind of like the counterpart to organic chemistry, 
and that it is the chemistry that covers the non-carbon-based compounds, but that doesn't always tell the full story. And even then, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry work very well together. One massive portion of inorganic chemistry is actually coming up with new metal catalysts. A lot of advanced organic chemistry and organic synthesis is extremely dependent on specialized catalysts that can make chiral molecules or make reactions super efficient, and they rely on inorganic chemists to come up with those catalysts. These catalysts are usually metal complexes, and they can be used to create more efficient and more green chemical reactions or specialty reactions that need specific chiral molecules. And because of this, inorganic chemistry has super, super important works. And a lot of inorganic chemistry nowadays also has a focus on green chemistry, which is all about making chemical reactions more sustainable. And that's a really cool aspect of chemistry. Inorganic chemistry also goes a lot into like crystal structures and the formation of these inorganic molecules, which is really big for material science. If you're big into cool materials, inorganic chemistry can totally be a path of chemistry for you. Inorganic chemistry is also a field where you can make these really cool crystals and use techniques such as x-ray crystallography to really go into crystal structures. That's a huge portion of inorganic chemistry. So inorganic chemists also super essential as kind of is a pattern here and it is a really cool subfield of chemistry if you want to go into materials or maybe catalysis parts of chemistry. Now next on the list is biochemistry and biochemistry probably has the most intuitive name of all these chemistries. Biochemistry is really the subfield that's at the intersection between chemistry and biology. Biochemistry is all about doing stuff with chemical systems in living things, and because of this, it's super important for maybe analysis in like hospitals or with pharmaceuticals and for a lot of other things. Biochemistry, if you're really into bio and chemistry, is a great field. You're going to be working with a lot of biologists and in the healthcare field as a biochemist, and a lot of what they do can be really interesting working with these biological systems. So if you're ever into the side of biology that's less so on the macro scale and more so on the micro scale of really breaking down how each of these little biological hypercomplex systems work, biochemistry will be great for you. Biochemists can do things such as working with pharmaceuticals and drugs, but even using chemistry to explain stuff like how proteins fold. It's a really neat field with a lot of variability, and if you like bio and biological systems, but maybe bio doesn't give you enough and you want to know and really dig deep down into how those systems work, biochemistry could be a perfect field for you. Last, but certainly not least, is physical chemistry. Now, physical chemistry is kind of a two-parter because there's quite a few fields of physical chemistry. And in physical chemistry, this is going to be a very math-based field. So if you are scared of math, maybe physical chemistry might not be the field for you. But if you think math and physics is really interesting, uh, I think physical chemistry is an awesome field. The first part of physical chemistry is quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics, I'm sure all of you have heard about, but kind of a breakdown explanation, if you don't know, is instead of looking at stuff through this macroscopic sense on this big classical physics scale, you're going to look at the very, very small fundamental building blocks of the universe on this very small atomic scale, and systems don't work the same on that smaller scale. They get quantized, uh, stuff gets sent in uh, distinct like energy packets instead of on a gradient, and these quanta give birth to the name quantum mechanics. This is a really cool field, and it really breaks it down to the very fundamentals of how stuff works in chemistry. Quantum mechanics can be extremely tough and uh, not intuitive, but it is a great field if you're interested in both physics and chemistry, and it really breaks down like the basis of how these bonds work and how these molecules interact and what gives them a lot of their fundamental properties. 
Now, the next part of physical chemistry is thermodynamics, and this is all about energy flow and transfer and entropy, and it's a big explanation of how and why chemical reactions go, or why stuff is found as a certain way in nature, or, you know, why a lot of these energetic systems and chemicals want to be energetic. It's a great field, and there's a lot of different stuff you can do with it. From, like, biological systems, a lot of protein folding is dictated by thermodynamics, to uh, energetic materials and, like, explosives and propellants. They are all dictated by thermodynamics systems, and it is really interesting field of chemistry if you're interested in how the, like, energy actually works within these molecular systems. Kind of in line, the next field is kinetics, and this is all about, like, rates and speeds of reactions. Kinetics and thermodynamics really go together to explain why chemical reactions go, and it's really good for the fundamental explanation of how these reactions work. Once you get past uh, thermodynamics and kinetics, there is statistical mechanics, and statistical mechanics kind of replaces that second part of physical chemistry and that first part of physical chemistry of quantum mech and puts them together. There is a certain intersection where you need to kind of combine those two theories to create proper molecular systems, and that is statistical mechanics. Physical chemistry is a really neat field that really breaks down the fundamentals of chemistry. If you have a big interest in math and chemistry and all of these fundamentals of the universe, physical chemistry might be the field for you. Now, those are the main subfields of chemistry. Of course, there are a lot of other, like, sub-subfields of chemistry, but that would be a much longer video and a lot more specific, and I think that's a good breakdown of the major fields of chemistry, the types of classes you'll be taking, because there is usually a class in the chemistry major for each of these subfields and kind of the career paths that each of these go on. So it's really interesting to see kind of how broad the chemistry major is, going from the intersection of physics and chemistry and math with physical chemistry, all the way to biochemistry and the interaction with biology and chemistry in those biological systems, and even in the middle with inorganic chemistry. I think a lot of this is really cool, and it shows how wide of a field of science that chemistry covers and why it's kind of the universal science and why I actually picked being a chemistry major because I love being able to grab from all these different fields of science. But let me know what your favorite subfield of chemistry is, maybe if you've taken the classes, or even if you haven't, what subfield of chemistry you're interested in. I would love to hear it in the comments down below. I hope you guys like the video, and I will see you next time.